Hello, and welcome back to the Rich Mind Podcast. And today, let's talk about winter. Yeah, that's right. Let's talk about winter. Because that's where I feel like we're actually in the season of winter when it comes to our uh, current life, uh, as far as the economy, uh, the political landscape that we're dealing with, just life in general. It feels like we're in a winter season. And so the question comes is, where do I get that from? Where does the idea of winter come from? And so there are two resources or two things that I'm kind of pulling from, similar, but a little bit different. The first being is Jim Rohn. Uh, you've heard me talk about Jim Rohn several times here on the podcast. And if you haven't looked for Jim's content, I still highly recommend you do that. But one thing he taught in his programs and a lot of his teachings was that life is like the seasons, meaning you're going to have all phases of life for all phases of the seasons in, in all areas of your life in all aspects, right? So you're going to have a spring, you're going to have a summer, you're going to have a fall, and you're going to have a winter. And each one of those different phases requires a different way of being, a different way of attacking your day-to-day -day activities. And it's understanding that you're in a particular season as to why or how you can make adjustments moving forward. So another resource that I'm referring to in this episode today, as far as talking about a winter, comes from a book called The Fourth Turning by William Strauss and Neil Howe. If you haven't read that book or haven't heard of that book, I would recommend you grab that one as well. Whether you read it or grab it on Audible, definitely get your hands on a copy. That would be a great idea. And what they talk about, once again, is that the patterns of life fall in a cyclical manner, meaning they there's cycles and they talk about different seasons in terms of uprisings, great times, good times, and then falling back into a more negative time, which was what I'm considering in this episode being a winter. So here are the different types of what they call uh, their seasons. Obviously we call them spring, summer, uh, fall, and winter, but here's what they call it. They call it the high season. This The high season is a period of post-crisis and renewal with strong institutions and social cohesion. And the next season is awakening, a time of spiritual exploration and rebellion against the established order. Number three is the unraveling, an era of individualism, cynicism, and weakening institutions. And number four is the crisis, a tumultuous period of upheaval, conflict, and potential transformation. So, when I read those, do any of those sound similar to what's kind of going on in our world today? Uh, everywhere you turn, doesn't matter with what's going on in the political realm, in the financial realm, uh, whether we're talking about inflation, whether we're talking about, as I mentioned, with the politics, just the, the chaos that seems to be going on day to day. So today talking about winter, and I've got four things uh, that I would like to share with you today that I think will help you navigate this somewhat negative time in our period of, of existence. Uh, but the good news is, is that spring is approaching and uh, that's exciting. I was sharing that with one of my kids the other day that I understand that tonight in today's times, it's a little bit challenging trying to figure out what to do, who to trust, uh, what to believe in nowadays. I get it. It's tough. I struggle with that as well. But the good news is, is that the springtime is on its way. And when it does, I think that life will begin to be Great. Again, I really do. I really do. So let's, uh, let's talk about this a little bit more as far as the winter and where I come up with this. Uh, in the book, The Four Turning, they talk about the it's cycles of about 80 to 100 years time periods. And if you go back to 2008, anybody that was around long enough to remember 2008, that's when the economic system began to crack and have its financial issues. So if we use that as a starting point of this quote unquote winter time and using 25 year time frames as far as the seasons themselves, that puts us we're right at about 15, 16 years into this cycle of this downturn or this negative crisis mode of winter. That isn't necessarily a terrible thing. We just have to be prepared for what's going on inside of winter. There are times to be aggressive. There are times to be cautious. And to think that today is going to be very similar to, to yesterday or even the way we grow up uh, or what the way we grew up, I should say, uh, the way our parents grew up, uh, the way even I grew up is completely different today than it was even just a few years ago. I would even say that even there's a time frame pre-COVID and then post-COVID. The way the world was 
and the way the world is is completely different. And if you're trying to live your life thinking and you're going to take it back to the way it was pre-COVID or pre-2008 before the financial crisis, that's where I think a lot of folks are tr- are getting themselves, whether it's financially or even mentally, uh, their own mindsets and their own belief systems are, are being challenged, which is creating a lot of stress, uh, creating a lot of anxiety. And uh, let's see if we can't try to help uh, with some of those things moving forward today. So as I mentioned, I've got four things for you that I want to share with you. I don't want to take up too much of your time today. But let me definitely express a ton of gratitude for you spending your time with me here up to this point. Uh, I just want to try to help you understand the things that I'm paying attention to in my life. There are decisions that I'm making, whether it's financial, whether it's with my business, whether it's with what I'm trying to communicate, that I'm taking all of the things into account that I'm trying to pay attention to. But understanding of what season we're in is definitely helping me navigate moving forward for myself and for my family. But as I mentioned, the good news is, is that we're about ready to enter into a season of spring, which is going to bring abundance. Uh, I believe beyond what we can even imagine up to this point, Uh, the advent of AI and and computer technology, the way it's moving forward, as long as obviously we keep it under control and use it as our benefit. I think that it's really going to bring forth a lot of fantastic things that we can't even begin to imagine what those things will be in the future. But let's go through the four steps or the four things. And I've got two in the personal development category, and I've got two in the financial education. I'd like to talk about both, right? To me, it's the blend of your personal development, your, your self-growth, your self-education, along with understanding how the system works in the financial standpoint. If you get a grasp of both of those, you can really propel yourself faster than a lot of other people in your surroundings and even in your own family. Uh, It's the combination of the two is what's going to make the difference. And so let's dive into what those uh, four things are. Two and two, two of personal development and two of the financial education. So number one is we need to cultivate mental resilience. Okay. So what do I mean about that? We need to understand that we are being bombarded all the time, every day, all day whether it's from social media, whether it's from the news channels, whether it's from anywhere, right? Any institution, any, anytime we're around anybody, we're being bombarded with distractions, with fear, uh, fear sells. If you haven't noticed already, right? Anything you turn on these days is they're trying to sell you or try to convince you that the world's falling apart. We're all just going to end up I don't know where we're going to end up. It's not going to be a good outcome from what I can tell based on what I'm hearing, right? From, from what I'm hearing from other people. So we need to cultivate some mental resilience and we need to be able to understand that, yes, these people are trying to inform us, but they might not be giving us the full story. They might not be giving us the full picture. And because of that, it's creating some stress, creating some anxiety within our own life. And I would encourage you to really sit with when you hear something that really pushes your buttons as far as from a negative, stressful standpoint, where is that coming from? So that information that this person or this institution is sharing with you, how are they generating income? That's the first thing to question. How are they generating income for themselves? Is it through views? Is it through clicks? Is it through whatever their source of income comes from? And if it is through any of those ideas that I just shared, Realize that they are in the business of getting you to stay on whatever platform that you're listening to or watching at that moment. And because of that, like I said, fear sells. And so they're going to continuously pump fear into you, into your environment, into everybody until the point where it's like everybody's about to break, which is exactly where I feel like we're in this winter season. So cultivate mental resilience. Get yourself separated from these negative institutions, negative people that are trying to pump this fear into your life. Number two, strengthen social connections. I was actually having a conversation with my wife today. And it's one thing that it's interesting as I've gotten older that uh, as the advent of the internet, right? You can jump on Zoom with anybody literally around the world with an internet connection. What I think that has done is that has kept us from being an, in our close net communities, right? Uh, I currently live, live in a neighborhood right now. And to say that I've, I've met my neighbors or I know my neighbors, that would not be true. Uh, and it's not that I don't feel like it's important. It's just that I have not spent the time as I believe that in past generations, when you didn't have access to uh, the distractions, the social medias, uh, the Zoom connections, the phone calls, 
you had to back in the day, and you can go as far back as you'd like, but I would say in, in a generation or two, you had to be close to your communities. You had to build a community of people that were helping each other, that knew each other, that supported each other. Now, you might have had some disagreements, and I'm sure that they did, but the point is, is that they built community. So that's what I would encourage you to think about and try to figure out if you can improve your own community. This is something I need to work on. I've tried to build some relationships with people, as I mentioned, in the internet space, meaning we've kept in touch with friends. You've heard my friend Greg Young on the podcast a few times. He's down in Florida. I'm in, in Indiana, and we communicate every couple of weeks, but that's not necessarily a community close to me. If I needed him to help me right away, that would obviously not help me very well because obviously the uh, the proximity of where he lives versus I do as well. So strengthen your social connections, figure out different ways to branch out into your community, whether it's uh, different organizations, even in your own neighborhood, that would definitely suggest that for you. And that's something I'm definitely going to be working on moving forward. So let's jump into some financial education pieces. As I mentioned, this is one thing that super passionate about this, this uh, subject. I know a lot of times I talk a lot about personal development on the podcast, right? But financial education, if you go back to a lot of my earlier episodes, I was trying to share with this, with you, the listener, as much wisdom as I possibly could of what I was learning in the system, right? Once you understand the system itself, you can then begin to make changes and make choices, understanding what inflation is. That's a subject for a different day. You won't get into a lot of that. Uh, I believe I, if you go back once again in the archives and probably just search inflation with, uh, within the in Rich Mind podcast, you should be able to see and find some episodes that I've discussed that in the past. But the idea is that you need to understand what it is. Actually, the the economic situation that we're in today is a big part of this winter that we're all experiencing. It's a struggle. It's a struggle to get ahead. Uh, my children are in their 20s, and I I struggle sometimes to give them advice as far as what to do and how to do it. Uh, I'm going to give you some of the advice that I give them. Uh, I'll give that to you today. But at the same time, it's, it's not as uh, simple. I don't want to use the word easy, but it's not as simple as it was even when I was growing up uh, to get ahead, to be able to find a job that was a good job, right, where, where prices were low enough, where you could go out and find a, a decent home, uh, live in a nice community have a decent car. I'm not talking about a brand new car. I'm just talking about a nice car, right? Something that you were proud of. It's not as simple as it was back then. So let's dive into a couple of the things that, that I'm doing in my personal life. And then I'm also encouraging my children to do as well. So that first one, that first piece is you need to build an emergency fund. So you need to figure out, and it's math, right? You just need to figure out some math. What is it that's going to make you feel comfortable. Three months, six months, 12 months of income or, or uh, a savings that will cover your expenses. So if something drastic happened, whether you lose, you lose your job, which I've had that happen, whether something drastic happens within your family and you have a large expense come up that you're not prepared for and you need to make some drastic changes in your life. Where can you set aside enough savings to offset if you need to make a drastic change, whether you decide to have it happen or it happens to you without your consent? The idea is that you that's it's a safety net. It's going to be able to keep you above water when you're in that challenging time. And I would strongly suggest you figure out what that number is for you. It can be it's going to be different for everybody, right? So add up all your expenses and figure out what that number is per month and then decide. Do I need to have three months of that total set aside? Six months, 12 months, set aside that amount and keep it liquid too. I know, I think, I believe sometimes a lot of folks will believe that they've got their uh, savings, quote unquote savings tied up or wrapped up in, in their homes or in a, a 401k account or something like that. And the problem with it, with believing in that is to me, that's not liquid. And when I say liquid is it's not, you can't access it very easy. Right. So what I'm trying to suggest for you to do today is to think about it needs to be liquid. You need to be able to convert whether you're converting it to cash or it needs to be in cash that you can get that. So that way you can use it in an emergency standpoint. So number two in the financial education piece is you need to diversify your income streams. So 
you need to think of skills. You need to think of different ways. You can start a side hustle. You can get a part-time job. You can do many multiple things. You can invest in assets. So understanding the difference between an asset and a liability is, is huge. An asset pays you and a liability takes money from you. So if you own, if you're asset poor and liability rich, meaning if you have very few assets that are paying you versus liabilities that are taking money from you, that's where you're going to struggle to get caught up and be uh, ahead in terms of being prepared for this new spring that's about to be upon us here in the next, let's say, five to 10 years. I don't know exactly when, but in the next few years, let's just say. Now, if you get yourself prepared to do that with this savings, this emergency fund that we talked about in the first piece of the financial piece, but then also diversifying your income, figuring out different ways that you can spend acquiring skills, learning sales skills, learning the AI. I mentioned that a few minutes ago. You can dive into AI and learn so much as far as how to use it and then begin offering services to different people. It's a great way to try to generate some extra income based on just a single point of failure, which is potentially just your job. Now, if you have a spouse or if you have a partner and you that person also has a, a job, that's different, right? But if you're solely by yourself and there's only a single point of failure, you need to try to get as many diversified revenue streams as you possibly can. And that will definitely help you in terms of trying to navigate some negativity that's going on out here in the economic environment. So those were the four things that I had for you today. And so let me just mention a couple of other things. Some of the things that I'm discussing with my children, trying to help them navigate. And you might know of these, or you might've already thought of some of these, but this is what I'm encouraging them to do, uh, to try to get themselves ahead. So that way we and they can be get themselves prepared for this upcoming spring season that's coming. I know we talked about winter a lot in this episode, but the good news is that the spring is coming. And the first thing that I'm telling them is to get out of bad debt. Uh, once again, if you go back in the archives of the Rich Mind podcast, you'll hear me talk about good debt versus bad debt. So I won't go into a lot of detail today, but good debt or is debt that puts money into your pocket. So if you own an asset, we talked about assets and liabilities just a few seconds ago. If you own an asset, that that asset is generating an income and putting money into your pocket. You need That's good debt if you can do that and it can pay you an income. Bad debt is money that's taking money from you. So credit card debt is a great example. Uh, car loans can be a great example if you're upside down in your car and you're still paying on your car. Getting yourself out of bad debt is one of the things you can do as fast as you possibly can. I recommend you doing as fast as you possibly can. Is one of the things you can do for yourself to get yourself prepared for the spring season that's coming up here in the near future. Uh, I'm telling you, <laughs> being in bad debt and having yourself overwhelmed with bad debt is frustrating. It's stressful. I've been there. I've done that. And that's one thing that I've done for myself as I've eliminated as much or what little bad debt I have is not overwhelming by any means. I can easily get it paid off very quickly with some liquid capital that I have set aside. But I would recommend that if you're in a position where your, your bad debt is accumulating, even if you're uh, accumulating more bad debt, you number one, you need to stop that as quickly as you possibly can, but then find ways through side hustles, through cutting back, through uh, being conservative, different ways you need to add to and get rid of that bad debt as fast as you possibly can. And then the last one I'm gonna leave you with today is you need to go out and acquire new skills. As I mentioned uh, earlier, with the advent of AI, with different things that are going on in, in the world today, it's changing so fast. It's amazing to me. I really try to pay attention and it still amazes me even how quickly everything is changing. So what skills can you acquire? And so some of the skills that I've encouraged my children to go out and do, number one would be the ability to communicate effectively with not only their peers, but adults in a, in a professional setting. So what do I mean by that? Uh, the ability to communicate as far as the ability to express uh, thoughts, the, the ability to sell, the ability to just have conversations with folks. You'd be surprised uh, how many times I've been out in, in wherever, right? In a, in a public place. And you'll see individuals, young or old, it doesn't matter. But they are, they struggle to just communicate. They struggle to put sentences together. They don't make eye contact with whoever they're talking to. 
Uh, I remember growing up, my grandfather taught me how to shake hands. I think that that's something as simple that I don't think that is is really taught anymore these days. So yeah, shaking hands, that was something that I was taught at a very young age. And I've tried to teach my kids how to shake hands as well. But the idea of though, just looking somebody in the eye, having a conversation, showing some empathy, showing the ability to communicate and have a conversation back and forth is a skill that You just need to practice. You need to get out there and practice. And if you're struggling with acquiring different opportunities, uh, if you're struggling with keeping opportunities, let's say you're bouncing from job to job to job and you don't understand why, it could be simply because you're just struggling in the category of communication. You've got to learn how to communicate effectively. And I'm just going to leave it there. Go out there and just try to figure out that piece. And I promise you, it's going to make great, great changes for you moving forward. So, Hopefully you found this message valuable today. I wasn't sure exactly what I was going to do. I had an idea of, of the idea of winter and uh, I just kind of went with it. So hopefully it was uh, valuable to you. The idea is that I want you to get yourself prepared for the season that we're in. Uh, it's affecting all of us. If you get yourself prepared and get yourself in a position to be ready for this spring season that's coming, I'm telling you, it's... It's going to be an amazing time. And I really want you to join me and the others that are out here actively trying to help and encourage you do that. Um, Let's do it together. It's going to be so much fun. So go out there. Have a fantastic day. If you wouldn't mind sharing the Rich Mind podcast with your family and friends, I would greatly appreciate that. Head over to the podcast platform of choice and leave me a review. A five-star review if you feel like it's warranted. I would greatly appreciate that as well. But Leave me some comments. Uh, Let me know what you think of the content, Uh, whether it's this episode or other episodes. I'm always trying to improve, and I definitely want to show up and bring as much value to you as I possibly can. So as I mentioned, go out there. Have a fantastic day. I look forward to coming back with the next episode again very soon. Until then, bye now.